Um, we have Lindsey Hunter here, so you know I'd like to take advantage of having Lindsey Hunter here. So, so we're going to do our thing right now. You know we like to do this across all sports. Today, it's Spencer Raxter's time to shine. It is the NBA and Detroit Pistons fast break. Five questions about the NBA and your Detroit Pistons. Let's get into it, shall we? All right, let's get it. First question of the fast break. Durant or Ivy? Who has the higher ceiling going forward as a Detroit Piston player? Lindsay, I, I am glad you are here because I want you to mark me on this one. I think that Jalen Duran is going to be a star. I think that Jalen Duran has the chance to have the highest ceiling of anyone on the Pistons. I'm talking a walking, you know, a walking 20. 13 2014 a game guy i mean i i am that high on him he's raw he's still not old enough to get in the bar and everything like (laughs) that like i understand that right but you look at the body you look at the bounce i saw when i was calling the game in brooklyn i saw him block a shot where his hand was above the square oh yeah and this guy i'm telling you man I am as high on anybody as I am on Jalen Duran. He is a star in the making. Am I wrong? Nope, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Okay. Um, I I think um, definitely we talk. I, ben and I talk about him. We talked about him a lot because I was asking Ben, have you ever talked to him? You know, giving him some you know little tidbits here and there. Um, but he his ceiling is super high. I. I I, I hope he can become somewhat of a Amari Stoudemire type because he has that body and that right. athleticism. He just has to, you know, Amari, Amari wasn't always as dynamic as he became. And he, you know, he got the 10, 14 foot jump shot. And of course, attacking the rim, he was the best at attacking the rim, you know, off pick and roll and stuff like that. If, if he can become, you know, similar to that, then, hey, what you said will, will be true. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and Spenny, I'm curious to get your take on that one, as a matter of fact. I do think it's Duran. I, I've I've been repeatedly saying this. Like, the first game I watched him play in a Pistons uniform, that first summer league game, obviously I was enamored by his size, his athleticism. He doesn't look like he belongs out there. No, like, he looks he like looked, he's outer space yeah, from everybody. He looked like he was ready for the league already when he was <laughs> yeah. in summer league. But what I got most excited about was he hit a turnaround, like, 15-footer. I remember that. It didn't even go in, but it (laughs) it looked so smooth, so clean. Like, it wasn't a hiccupy jump shot. I was like, that looked natural. And that I was like, he's got, obviously, Rashard Lewis in there. Maybe they bring Sheed back, who was there at Memphis, have him, you know, get some big-man shooters in there to help him. I love Jalen Durant. Real quick on the WoodwardSports.com chat thread. Here on Mark M says this, and I I never hear anybody talk about this. And I didn't talk about it, but it's true. It's something I've thought about before. He says rim protecting can change games. He can he can be a rim protector defensively. Yeah. Oh, definitely. He, and you see flashes of it now, right? You know, you watch him go up and block at a shot. Yeah, at nineteen. Yeah, nineteen. He didn't. Have, he doesn't have a clue what he's doing right now. Right. So, um, and and everybody needs a rim protector. Like you, you watch. If you look at all the good the, the good teams, the teams that compete every year, they all have some sort of rim protection. You know. Um, well, it gives you a shot. When 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 you break down defensively, it gives you a shot to stay in the fight. You like you, absolutely, yeah. you, you know, you 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 break down, you blow an assignment, you got at least a fighting chance to not give up a bucket that possession. And, and I think a lot of people get it misconstrued. Having a rim protector doesn't mean he necessarily blocks shots all the time. Yeah. Right. It, it's just the fact that like Draymond's a great rim protector. You know, he's he's small in stature, but and he's not as athletic as Durant. But he's a great rim protector because he understands how to put that barrier up. You know, he he jumps vertical. He doesn't put his arm out, and he makes it tough to challenge around the rim. So, um, if if he can, if if Jalen can become that with his athleticism, now he will be. He could be a dominant shot blocker. Yeah, and, and Mike G says rim protection doesn't mean much against Golden State. Mike G, don't get me wrong. Like like the game has changed, no doubt. But again, I'm coming from the standpoint when your when your defense breaks down he gives you a shot at least to not no, give up an easy and, and mike g you, you go look at the stats golden state when they're winning they score more points in the paint than anybody it's just not that don't, don't get you know hypnotized with the three ball right you know they steph and clay those guys get to the basket the, and the lanes right oh when, when, when you can shoot from the perimeter there's gaps man yes. duck in cuts yes. all that kind of stuff there, yes. there's gaps all right uh, Brandon Kent said it in the Wolverine Sports Chat. Perimeter defense is more important than rim protection. Gobert, Gobert gets destroyed in the playoffs every year. And that's, I said that on the heavyweights. 
Jalen Duran is already an infinitely better perimeter defender than Rudy Gobert. Like, the way he can stay in front of a guard, stay with a guard, and move his feet is extremely impressive for a guy his size. Right, and he's not he's not a liability yes. on, a, on, a, on a ball screen, pick mm-hmm. and roll. He's not. No, I, I just love it. All right, next question on the fast break. You're starting your franchise. You got to pick between one of these two guys to build around. Luka Doncic or Giannis Antetokounmpo. Who are you choosing? Man, Lindsey. Like I want to say Luca so bad because I, from his car that he drives into the arena, <laughs> that was a tank. <laughs> yeah, he's got like an armored tank or whatever yeah, right, it is that he drives right. into the arena. The way he chirps at assistant coaches with the Pistons. Uh, Who started that? <laughs> I know. We need to find that. Out. We do need to find that out. Um, Dwayne Casey even said he liked it too. I, there's it's good to get a little juice going. I want to say Luca so bad. I love that Luca's like bigger and thicker. And when he retires, he's going to gain like 40 pounds the next day. Like, I like that about him, too. I just, I like Luca so much. And it's so fun to watch Luca play because he's such a, a wiry score in that he's going to find a way if he's got to shoot right hand, left hand, off the back foot, fade away, turn and spin, post, three-point shot, whatever. He, he's, he'd be the ultimate horse player. And I love it. And he's fun. But Giannis, man, like, <laughs> that link. The fluidity. And I know, like, the perimeter game can be a liability at times. I understand that. But when you size things up, and and he's cashed one in already, and that's going to be the question about Luka, and the Mavericks have to do something to help him. They are on the clock now. Now with Luka. But I just can't. Just Giannis, man. He's the Ferrari, bro. Like, he's the Ferrari, and I can't get past it. I want to say Luka. I do. But then my inner wisdom says to take Giannis. <laughs> and you're absolutely right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I mean, you watch him and you watch his, how he's developed over the years and how, you know, his mindset is, I have to get better. I have to keep working. I have to get, you know, you, and with what he's already accomplished, defensive player of the year, MVP of the league, MVP of the finals. Right. He's already done that. And he's, and he's still not complete. Right. But he's a monster, and he he brings it every single night. I've, I've I've watched him a lot, and I've never seen him not bring it. And that's what I'm so I'm impressed with him about. You know, with with his star status. You know, you would think, and then we see a lot of guys take nights off. They don't play. This dude brings it, no matter who he's playing against, where he is. He brings it every night. And and you would have to start your organization with a guy like that. Yeah, I mean, it, and it is. And look, I get the age thing. I'm talking. I read it as you know, we're starting a team right now this year, and the questions are going to be asked. And and I see it too with, you know, the the Luca discussion already. They're like, well, he doesn't defend. Like that's when you score a lot and you don't win. That's the default. Well, well you, you can't defend. I, I won't say you can't. I think you just don't put the energy into that end of the court because your your responsibility is to go out and for us to compete. I got to get forty. And to get 40, I have to be out here. And to be out here, I'm a human being. I have to take a playoff. I got to take a playoff. You're not taking the playoff with the ball in your hand. And see, the thing I love about Giannis, he's not taking plays off. No, he's not. (laughs) No, he's he's definitely not. Who you got on that one, Spenny? Uh, I'm going Giannis. Are you? Do you want it to be Luka, too, though? I do a little bit, but... What Giannis so can fun. do offensively as well as defensively, where he's one of the best defenders in the league, yep. it's you can't can't say no. But it was um, Jerome Allen, assistant coach Jerome Allen, who, yeah. who was talking crap to Luca. Uh, but did, but did Jerome start it or what happened? Uh, I, 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 I never saw, heard a definitive, you know. I saw Luca walking, and I saw Jerome walking toward him, and then. So, according to Mark Spears, Pistons assistant coach Jerome Allen believes that Doncic spoke very disrespectfully to Casey, which is why Allen started getting oh, into okay. it with him. Okay, it makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. It, it, cer- it certainly does make sense. All right, next question of the fast break. I asked Lindsay this yesterday during the Ask Lindsay about Steph and Zeke. And we talked about it a little bit before the show started, but where does John Stockton fit into your all-time point guard rankings? Whew, that's tough, man. Neil, what do you think? What do you say? He ain't in Isaiah's stratosphere. <laughs> and I, I don't care where you people go with the answer to this question. I don't care what you guys say. As long as he ain't equivalent with Isaiah. He's got to be top not. ten. He has to be top ten. Okay. 
I, Somewhere I, down there. I have him right <laughs> out of the top five. You know, I, I think it's Magic, Curry, Zeke, Oscar Robinson, Chris Paul, and then you can fill in the, the bottom five. Now, now, so uh, you got him ahead of Chris Paul? You got Chris no, Paul got ahead Chris of... Chris uh, Paul ahead of Stockton, yeah. I'm cool with that. Yeah, I'm 100% cool with that. And I'm not a huge Chris Paul guy. Yeah. But I, I'm anything that you put ahead of John Stockton, I'm down with. <laughs> and, and, here, and here's the other thing. I, to be fair, I'm compromised. You guys know this, right? I'm, I'm a simp for Isaiah Thomas. I am. And right, I freely right. admit that. However, I would even take it a step further. If we went pound for pound, now obviously it's going to be magic. 6'9 point guard, dude. Like, right. What are you going to do? Guy right. played center in the NBA Finals. Even I, you know, you got to put magic there because of the right. physical gifts he was getting. Right. However, if it were pound for pound, I put Isaiah Thomas up there with anybody in the history that's ever played the game because of the dog factor. And I don't care what you guys say, and everyone's going to get fired up about this, and I don't care. There were 1,100 people at a game at the Silverdome, and the Pistons were winning like 11 games a year. And he showed up with nothing and walked out with back-to-back championships in the middle of the golden era of the NBA. That's factual. That's what happened. That's what he did. It was through his will. He showed up and did it. And that's why, for me, he's always got to be at the top of this list. And he always will be. And John Stockton, yeah, you got Magic, you got Zeke. I'll put Steph Curry there. I'll put Oscar Robertson up there, too. For a, he, Oscar Robertson never gets the love that, that, that he should get. I'll put Chris Paul up there. I'll put Bob Cousy up there. I'll put Jerry West up there. He's the logo, for Christ's sake. i put that, Jerry West above Stockton. That sure. makes him better than John Stockton. <laughs> <laughs> he's the logo of the league. What Stockton oh, ever done? Man. What did he ever do for real, other than run the pick and roll every second of every game with Carl Malone? Yeah, it's. I mean, he's, he has a lot of steals too, but still. Cool. Yeah. Short shorts. I'll give you that. Yeah. He's top ten though. I mean, top ten. Carl Malone's the best low post scorer in the history of the NBA. So like having that in pick and roll every. I'm play. just saying they both had a lot of usage, Lindsay. Yeah. No, they did, but they got to two finals with that usage, and, and as much as you know. I, for God's sake, I almost got in a fight with John Stockton before. So <laughs> Good. Good. I'm sure he was in the wrong. <laughs> yeah, he elbowed me, and I grabbed him around his neck. But um, that, he, he has to be top ten. You know, he, he, was, he could still pass the ball and make things happen. But, I, you know, he's not Isaiah Thomas, and there's no way close. No. Thank you. You know. Thank you, Lindsay. <laughs> Thank you.